Who inspires you? Your mother? Your child? Inspiration comes in many forms, and at WBGU-TV, you inspire us to bring entertaining and educational programming to our region. Get inspired, stay inspired. Well, Fort Meigs was constructed during the War of 1812, starting in February of 1813. It was a massive installation. And to me, it's pretty amazing that they managed to build this in just three short months by hand. So between February and April of 1813, they constructed this large fortification that we have reconstructed now. Biggest wooden walled fort in the United States. We put 10 acres and actually put eight football fields inside this fort. The Folt soldiers first got here and started cutting down the trees to build the fort. All they had was a blanket to try to stay warm. And this is in February of 1813. It was cold. Now, from February to the late April, early May, this is what it, this is what they got done. Seven block houses and all the pickets. When the weather got warm, all that uh, dirt turned to turned to mud. Said so on a good day, it was up to your shoe bottoms. On a bad day, it was up to your knees. You had six men sleeping in a tent. You're eating bad food and drinking bad water. And so we had more people die here of sickness and disease and were actually killed by the British and the Indians. It's built for several reasons. Uh, number one, it was built to amass enough men and supplies so that General Harrison's Army of the Northwest could hopefully attempt a winter invasion into Canada in early 1813, so like February, March of 1813. When that failed to happen, then things shifted, and what they said was, now what we want you to do is build the fort and maintain it and man it, but it's going to act as a defensive checkpoint. So it's going to stop the British from any further invasions into Ohio. And just as importantly, you're going to protect Commodore Perry over there when, when he's building the fleet. And then also it protected the strategic Maumee River. Since America did not control Lake Erie at that time, they were floating a lot of men and supplies uh, through the river system up the western side of the state and then down the Maumee. So it protects the lifeline that's moving men and supplies and materials up to the front lines here in Ohio. Really what makes Fort Meigs significant is the fact that this is the turning point in the war. It's these two successful defenses of Fort Meigs that usher in a series of American victories. Prior to Fort Meigs, it was almost nothing but American defeats. The man who built Fort Meigs, who laid it out, was an engineer by the name of Captain Eliezer Darby Wood. And uh, Wood is a rock star in 1812, if you ask me. He's a West Point graduate. When he graduates from West Point in 1806, he helps defend, or excuse me, um, create some of the defensive works in New York City's harbor and along the East Coast, then comes out here early in the war, uh, builds Fort Meigs, also designs Fort Stevenson, fights and, and mans an artillery battery during the first siege of Fort Meigs. And here's the other cool part. His general out in, uh, in the Niagara Peninsula is so impressed with him, the general pays out of his own pocket to have a, a monument erected at West Point for wood. Wood County, Ohio is named after Wood. And then also, they name a fort out on an island called Fort Wood. And later on, when America gets the Statue of Liberty and they need a place to put it, Fort Wood had been abandoned and they fill that in. And so Fort Wood is the base of the Statue of Liberty. And it all comes right back here at Fort Meigs. And of course, we have William Henry Harrison that fought here. We have Richard Johnson, who later became Vice President of the United States. Harrison, of course, became President, uh, shortest serving President, but still nonetheless, he was here as well. Uh, Robert Lucas was here too, who later became Governor of Ohio and then moved out to Iowa and became part of the, uh, the um, he became the first uh, Territorial Governor of Iowa as well. So we have a lot of movers and shakers that were right here at Fort Meigs. The reconstructed fort itself is open April through October. So with your admission price, you get to come in and see the fort, see the four blockhouse exhibits. To me, the highlight, and I think a lot of people will tell you this though, is getting to see that soldier dressed up in his uniform, answering questions, having a musket demonstration as well. This is the Charleville musket, the workhorse of the American Army during the War of 1812. Now when you're loading the weapon, you have to have at least four teeth to be in the military. Two on the top and two on the bottom, and they had to meet somewhere in the middle. <coughs> so you could do that. And I'm going to pour a little bit of that priming powder into the pan. Cast the musket about and pour the rest of the powder down the barrel. 
draw uh, my ramrod, ram it down home. Put the ramrod back, makes a great arrow. Then I only get to fire my musket once. My musket's now ready. I'm expected to fire this weapon three times every minute, so that's once every 20 seconds. I'm gonna train four hours every single day to get up to that speed. And then we have a 3,000 square foot museum too. And we probably have 80 to 90% of the artifacts that the Ohio Historical Society has related to the War of 1812. And out of that, I would say 60 or 70% actually came right here from Fort Meg. So you get to come out and see the real deal uh, the artifacts were actually found right here from the soldiers at Fort Meigs. And with this being the bicentennial year uh, starting now and then our 200th anniversary in 2013, we're going to have lots of new exhibits and new programs specifically related to our 200th birthday here at Fort Meigs.